Well, good afternoon, everyone. And I think it's fair to say this is a good afternoon. Uh, first, let me just uh, point out that uh, uh, this city is made and is kept safe by people that work for it. And this morning, I unfortunately had to attend a funeral for a police officer who was killed in the line of duty. And then I just came in this hospital from visiting two firefighters who were burnt uh, at a fire today, saving people's lives. Uh, happy to say that both the firefighters uh, will uh, recover. Uh, they have burns to different degrees, but uh, I've talked to both of them. They were both in good spirits. One of them, his wife and uh, mother was there. And uh, it's just a reminder that uh, while we're going on and building for the future, we have a presence and we have to take care of each other. And we're just blessed that people want to come to the city and uh, want to devote their lives to making the city better. Uh, and some of them put their lives in danger. And uh, that's unfortunately what we were reminded of this morning. Um, in any case, uh, over the past 10 years, as you know, we've worked very hard to diversify and strengthen our city's economy. Uh, and those investments, I think, are paying off. Uh, the press's eyes glazed over every time they heard Dan Doctoroff talk about his five borough economic diversification plan. But uh, it was not a joke. Uh, it's something that has really happened. Uh, our tourism industry is the nation's largest today, thanks to our hard work over the last 10 years. Film and television production continues to grow and recently surpassed Boston and venture capital for high-tech startups. Uh, but we are not slowing down in our effort to continue to transform the city's technology sector and prime the economic pump for generations to come. I think it's fair to say that today will be remembered as a defining moment. Uh, earlier this year, if you remember, we made an offer to universities near and far. Build or expand a world-class science and engineering campus here in our city and we will provide prime New York City real estate at no cost, plus up to $100 million in city capital for infrastructure improvements. Uh, I was happy to say we re received seven qualifying applications from 17 top-tier institutions from around the world, uh, with some partnering with top-tier private companies. The applications were innovative, comprehensive, and far-reaching. I think they were much more than we had hoped for. And today, after nearly two months of reviewing the proposals and interviewing the applicants, uh, I must say there's something like 10,000 pages if you added up all the proposals. So if uh, Bob Steele and Seth Pinsky's eyes look a little bit glazed over, that's probably the reason. Uh, but uh, we are very uh, excited to announce a winner. And it is a dynamic joint submission from two world-class institutions, Cornell University and the Technion Israel Institute of Technology. Their sweeping proposal envisions an 11-acre campus on the former Goldwater Hospital site on Roosevelt Island, right in the heart of our city. It promises to create a beehive of innovation and discovery, attracting and nurturing the kind of technical talent that will spawn new companies, create new jobs, and propel our city's economy to new frontiers. Now, we launched this competition because we've seen the power of universities to be a magnet for talent and economic innovation and uh, growth. Uh, some 150 years ago, Cornell was established through the U.S. government's university land grant program to promote advances in agriculture and engineering. <coughs> and if you remember, and none of us can say we did, although Hank Greenberg and Sandy Well maybe <laughs> are old enough to remember 150 years ago, uh, that program helped propel America to become the world's most innovative economy. And now I think it's, uh, it really is appropriate that one of the re original recipients of that historic land grant is receiving the new land grant to help us drive the 21st century economy. And we believe this new land grant can help more dreamers and entrepreneurs from around the globe 
come to New York and help us become the world's leading city in technological innovation. As elected officials, we need to focus on the day-to-day. -day. Uh, we all know that, but as with everything else, we are doing to diversify and strengthen our economy, we need to take a long-term view. And that's what this campus represents. It really is a game changer. In fact, the economic impact will be even greater than what we originally thought. A new analysis conducted by the city's Economic Development Corporation predicts that it will generate more than $23 billion in economic activity over the next three decades, as well as $1.4 billion in total tax revenues. The campus will also be a major job creator. Building it will generate nearly 20,000 construction jobs. Operating it will produce up to 8,000 permanent jobs, and those jobs, I might point out, are not just for PhDs, thank goodness, because maybe I can get one of them. <laughs> There'll be jobs for building staff and administrative assistants and office workers. And by conservative estimates, the campus is expected to spin off, to spin out something like 600 new companies over the next three decades, which will create up to 30,000 permanent jobs and attract other existing companies to move here. In a word, this project is going to be transformative. With its cutting-edge campus and pioneering green elements, it will transform Roosevelt Island and start up, spin out, and naturally settle across the river in Long Island City. It will transform Western Queens by bringing in new talent and resources. It will build on the transformation already occurring within our academic community. And most importantly, by fueling growth not just in our tech sector, but in all industries, it will transform our economy. I'll let the leaders of both Cornell and Technion give a more detailed presentation in a few minutes, but let me quickly run through the highlights of why we found this proposal so compelling and why we think it will redefine our economic future. First, of all the applications we received, Cornell and the Technion was the far and away the boldest and most ambitious. Their proposal called for the most students, about 2,000 a year, the most faculty, about 300, and the most building space, over 2 million square feet. Their plan includes a state-of-the-art, environmentally sustainable campus designed by the leading architectural firm Skidmore, Owens, and Merrill. It will comprise laboratories, teaching and research space, dormitories and housing facilities, incubator space for startups, and spin-out space for commercialization. Its multidisciplinary academic program has intentions of being among the best in the country, one that will initially concentrate on digital and connective media, healthcare, and the build urban environment, the built urban environment, but will have the flexibility to focus on the industries and ideas that have the greatest potential to create new companies and jobs in New York City. The proposal also features elements that will help integrate the campus into the city, including 500,000 square feet of public spaces, public programming, and partnerships with our public school system to enhance math and science programs for at least 10,000 students a year, something that is just desperately needed. In addition, Cornell and the Technion plan to do something no other university proposed, immediately establishing a $150 million fund for startups that maintain activity in the city for at least three years. That fund is going to pay instant dividends and continue making New York the hottest city in the world when it comes to startup activity. The second major factor behind its selection is the dynamic and historic partnership between Cornell and the Technion. Cornell, of course, as you know, is an Ivy League university that already has one of the top ten engineering schools in the nation. It's also no stranger to our city with a wide range of satellite programs based in four out of our five boroughs. The university already employs more than 5,000 people here, most of them here at their world-class medical school on Manhattan's east side. In addition, our city is home to some 50,000 Cornell alumni, a community that has shown strong, strong support for this project and will play a key role in connecting the campus to our business community. 
That support, I think, could not be better illustrated than by Cornell's announcement on Friday that it had received a magnificent $350 million gift, the largest in its history and one of the largest in the history of American higher education to support the development of this tech campus. Furthermore, Cornell has a very strong culture of entrepreneurship. In the past five years alone, Cornell alumni have created more than 2,600 companies around the world, employing some 34,000 people and raising more than $10.6 billion in new capital. And the university hopes its new high-tech campus will allow it to replicate this rate of activity right here in New York City. The Technion you may not be quite as familiar with. It brings international star power to this project, which is only fitting since we are the world's most international city. The university has been a major force behind Israel's emergence as the home of one of the greatest concentrations of high-tech startup companies anywhere in the world. According to one report, the Technion's campus in Haifa sits at the center of an ecosystem of 4,000 startups, and global companies like Intel, Google, Microsoft, IBM, Yahoo have all established R&D operations nearby. Israel has 121 companies listed on the NASDAQ, more than all of Europe combined, and half of them are headed by graduates of the Technion. Meanwhile, three of the four Israeli scientists who have won the Nobel Prize in the physical sciences, sciences are professors at the Technion. And the Technion's alumni have been responsible for the development of the world's first wireless technology microprocessors, the first intestinal pill camera, the first standalone anti-ballistic missile defense system, and leading internet search engines. It amounts to an incredible record of breakthroughs in technology and, combined with Cornell's own successful track record as a breeding ground for entrepreneurs, it makes a tantalizing, groundbreaking partnership. The third reason for this submission selection is its incredibly aggressive schedule. Cornell and Technion plan to open an initial program in 2012, that's correct, in a few months, at a leased off-site location. The first phase of their permanent Roosevelt Island campus will open no later than 2017. Remember, we have to move the hospital out, and then they have to get going and building. And by the end of 2018, some 300 students would be enrolled in the program taught by some 70 faculty. Now, before I'm introducing today's other speakers, let me add one more important point about our applied sciences initiatives. The competition is not over because we are determined to make this city the dominant global force in technology. We remain in active discussions with three other applicants, NYU, Columbia, and Carnegie Mellon. And we're eager and hopeful that we'll be able to find ways for them to realize their proposals, each of which envisions building campuses in other locations around the city. But I also want to take this moment to thank all of the universities who are taking part and have taken part in this competition. They invested an incredible amount of time, energy, and money putting their proposals together, and these proposals were stronger than anything we could have imagined. Their hard work and enthusiasm for this project only reinforced our belief that this is an endeavor with incredible potential. I also want to thank the two guys who conceived and carried out this game-changing competition. Deputy Mayor Bob Steele and EDC President Seth Pinsky. They just um, to say that they are the heroes here is so much of an understatement that uh, it, it's just history will write that this was a game changing time in New York City, and these two guys really were the ones that thought about it, created it, did all the work with their staffs, and uh, we are here today because of them. And uh, uh, sometime, hopefully, we'll find a ways to really say thank you to them. Uh, I want to uh, thank them and their respective staffs uh, and an advisory group 
who uh, has spent a lot of time evaluating the proposals and, of course, received support from a number of leaders in government and the worlds of technology, education, and business. And some of them have joined with us today, and I'm happy to say including Israel's Consul General, Consular General, Ido Aroni. Uh, thank you. <laughs> of course, this is not just a watershed moment for New York City. It is also a very big day for Cornell and the Technion. In fact, this announcement is being streamed live to Cornell graduates and students next door and to the Technion students in Israel. If they give a loud enough cheer, maybe we'll hear them all the way over here. Uh, in, in this... In this, uh, in this day and age, <laughs> in this day and age, great universities know that they have to expand. They have to expand their locations. They have to expand their horizons. They have to expand their faculty and interests. And here are two universities who certainly have shown the courage to go and do that. And uh, their success will be our success. Our success will be their success. Uh, but I'm sure there's an awful lot of proud people that, that are alumni and are uh, currently matriculating or working at both these universities that have a very big smile on their face. Um, Cornell's president, David Scorton, and the Technion's president, Peretz Lavi, are also here today. Uh, and uh, I want to congratulate them again and their respective institutions and turn the floor over to them, beginning with David Scorton. David. Uh, Mayor Bloomberg, before I uh, thank you for this incredibly, incredibly good news and share a few thoughts, uh, President Levy and I have considered your application for work on the campus, and we're pleased to tell you that we've accepted your application. And as soon as you're done with the uh, duties in New York City, we have an office uh, waiting for you and an ante room and some assistance. Welcome to the New York Tech campus. I'll, I'll have to allow President Levy to answer that later. <laughs> We're here today to uh, accept uh, with very, very uh, strong humility and with gratitude this great vote of confidence of the City of New York and of its mayor and deputy mayor and head of the New York City Economic Development Corporation for a dream that we have long held. This is a story of connectivity of connectivity between people and their ideas, between researchers and business people, between students and their dreams. In the back of the room is a phalanx of Cornell students, and it is to them and to the students around the world who will aspire to futures in the tech industry in this magnificent city that these efforts are oriented. We believe that New York City has established so many milestones in so many areas of technology and enterprise. No better example of that can be by our mayor, one of the uh, most successful tech entrepreneurs of his time. And so in a few minutes uh, after my partner speaks, uh, we will share a bit about our vision for this. But I do want to make one very, very important point, and if uh, nothing else gets across, I hope this gets across clearly. This is not a moment for a touchdown dance for Cornell or for Technion. This is a time for a touchdown dance for New York City, for the people who are dreaming to get ahead. And we are going to open our arms and our activities to the K through 12 system, to those in the CUNY system, to those in the SUNY system, and the other fine institutions of higher education. This is not an exercise in exclusion or winning. This is an exercise in inclusion and having all the ships rise in this fine city. So I want to thank you very, very much. I'm uh, standing here in front of you with excitement and very proud. I just came from Stockholm. Didn't sleep much last week. Landed in Israel on Friday and got a phone call that I have to be in New York for this event. 
And this uh, is as excited as a Nobel ceremony, I must tell you. <laughs> and I have been to two of them. We got the first letter from the mayor, I think it was December 2010, and I was sure that somebody is playing a joke on me. And I called the city, and I think I spoke with Seth, and he told me this is for real. And I asked, why Technion? And he said something that really touched my heart. He said, you know, your university took a country with the Jaffa Oranges economy and turned it into a semiconductor economy. I must tell you that uh, we read the RFEI sent by the mayor, and we were captivated. It was prophetic. I used the slide of your first page talking about the power of knowledge in the 21st century ever since in every one of my talks. Simply incredible. But we needed a partner. We knew we cannot do it ourselves. 6,000 miles, the Atlantic, the Mediterranean, too far. <laughs> and we found a partner. And what a partner. The teams, the Cornell and Technion teams that worked together did a marvelous job. Marvelous job of innovation. The program that they put together is an innovative program. I'd like to thank the mayor for his warm words, but we are not going to have an extension of the Technion or Cornell. We are going to have something new, something new that will really energize this city. The links between the Technion and New York goes back to 1941, 1941, and even before that. We are celebrating now, Mr. Mayor, the 100th anniversary of the Technion. The cornerstone was laid in 1912. The support came from New York. A banker by the name of Jacob Ship was the one who helped us to build the historic Technion building. And here, 100 years later, we come to New York and close the historic circle. We are proud. We build a bridge between Israel and the United States, the two countries that share so much, between New York and Haifa, between the Technion and Cornell. We have a presence in New York, our American Technion Society, our friends here, the headquarters are in New York, and together, I'm sure we'll stand up for this challenge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for picking us. Thank you very much. So we're going to take you on a journey now, and we'd like you to think about a current college student somewhere in the United States. And she's thinking about graduate school, and she's thinking about a way of combining her strong interest in the technological fields with a strong desire that she has for entrepreneurship. And we're going to show you our vision for how to take this student's dreams and aspirations and bring them to reality here in New York City and have the company remain in New York City and generate revenue and jobs. And we're going to tell you just a little bit about how we think that could occur. We believe that the applied sciences challenge that the mayor has given to the world, which we have responded to, is the right idea at the right time. In the 21st century, the technology sector is shifting from technology for its own sake to technology in the service of business and industry. We firmly believe, my partner and I, that New York City is positioned to become the new technology capital of the world because, the un because of the unrivaled potential for this deep connectivity, as I mentioned, between technological advance and the many businesses that it may serve. The scale that would matter to a city this size and vibrant, of course, is the creation of tens to hundreds of thousands of jobs. And this is a scale that Cornell and Technion have already succeeded in the past and will continue to in the future. The Cornell and Technion have developed a strategic alignment because of many, many things that we have in common. As you heard uh, the mayor uh, recite, Cornell uh, faculty uh, and alumni uh, have been responsible for approximately 2,600 
companies as a conservative estimate just in the last five years that employ more than 34,000 people. As you heard the mayor said, the Technion has changed the economy of Israel. Technion graduates are now leading the high-tech economy. There are more startup companies in Israel than in the entire European continent in absolute numbers. Every major corporation have an R&D center within 15 minutes drive from the Technion, including Apple that just announced that they are going to open their R&D center in the vicinity of the Technion. Combining the two traditions, the Cornell and Technion, will bring, I believe, such a level of excellence to the Roosevelt Island that it will catalyze and change the economy of the city. We believe that uh, the new campus will be a magnet that will allow us to attract high-tech companies, entrepreneurs, VC groups, and excellent faculty to this new campus. We envision a ring of companies around the campus that will allow us both technology transfer and mentoring of students by the industry. And this new interaction between industry and academia will be something which will be innovative and new. We estimate conservatively the creation of 30,000 permanent jobs from spin-offs, from licensing of intellectual property, and for a growth of existing business. As the mayor mentioned, we envision up to 8,000 permanent jobs from campus operations and up to 20,000 construction jobs as the campus takes shape. What are the ingredients for success? Well, of course, we need uh, what is called thought leadership, envisioning and experimenting with the future, and of course, technology innovation. And we sorely need, and we believe we have found the right city for entrepreneurial ecosystem. And I want to make a very important point uh, we are not so naive as to think that one single campus is going to create all of these jobs by itself. Our idea is to blend in, as I mentioned, with the many, many other aspects of the city that are currently so active and successful, and the mayor has mentioned some of those activities and successes, and to come together with the already existing and flourishing ecosystem in this city and help to add one more piece to the puzzle to make it a complete picture. But the part of the picture that the mayor challenged us to do is to expand the talent pool. And how can we do that? Well, first, we need to attract the most outstanding and diverse students to New York City. And Cornell and Technion and the many other excellent educational institutions in this city will attract them aplenty. Secondly, we need to utilize all the powers in our disposal to develop and hone their skills not only in technology, but in the related business skills that are necessary to complete that circle. Very importantly, we need to retain them in New York City, as many as possible for as long as possible, and by this active positive feedback loop, create that expanded talent pool that the mayor has wisely called for. We plan on having two new academic degrees. Master of Applied Sciences, a dual degree between Cornell and the Technion, and a PhD, a dual degree between Technion and Cornell. These will be new degrees, again, emphasizing engineering on one hand and entrepreneurship spirit on the other. In addition to that, there will be the traditional academic degrees on campus, like a master and a PhD in more traditional fields. We decided to go away from uh, the traditional structure of a university. Instead of having faculties, we are going to have hubs. And the hubs will be flexible. You can see now the first three hubs that we envision on Roosevelt Island. The health life, the healthier life hub, the connective media hub, and the built environment hub. Computer science, electrical engineering, information sciences, economics, and business will be the common theme of all three hubs. But each of them will interact with specific, more traditional fields. And these hubs will be flexible. In five years, they may be different. And these hubs will be interacting with the 
traditional industries outside Roosevelt Island, like with the advertisement, entertainment, finance, publishing, the connective media hub, healthcare, insurance, medical information system, the healthier life hub, and the architectural designs, construction and energy, the built environment hub. We envision it as an open, very flexible system that will build around themes rather than around traditional fields of expertise. In a moment, we're going to take you on a very, very brief uh, tour of an artist's conception of this beautiful campus. and want to tell you some of the attributes that we have designed into the plan. Once again, taking a challenge from the mayor and from the way this city looks at uh, how we should build things and develop things. This campus will be an environmental standard bearer that will make people in the city of New York and around the country proud. It will have open and welcoming public spaces and as I mentioned to you will be inclusive and not exclusive. It will be both a campus and a community and we believe a technology magnet for those many other pieces of the puzzle already successful throughout New York City. And finally, within the campus buildings, the idea is to set up the opportunity for spontaneous interaction between people, between organizations, both academic and corporate, and make it a living laboratory for bringing together the many pieces in New York City in a micro level that also have to be brought together and have been brought together so successfully by this administration at the macro level. Mr. Mayor, thank you for this wonderful opportunity. I think the most impressive was the yellow water taxi going down the East River on the eastern side of Roosevelt Island. Um, we have a number of people who wanted to say something, and uh, one of the most important is our Congresswoman, Carolyn Maloney. She represents this area, and she's also been a major supporter of this initiative. Congresswoman? Thank you. Uh, bravo to all. This is so important to our city, and I would say to our nation, uh, congratulations to Cornell. So proud of you for being selected. Uh, congratulations to the Roosevelt uh, Island community and, and Western Queens community that also worked hard and was welcoming and want to help and support this project in every way. Uh, but most of all, I want to thank our, our great mayor for coming forward with a really visionary, great idea and his team. It is a, a tremendous investment in the future of our city and our nation. And thank you, too, for having the wisdom to choose Roosevelt Island, which is located in the district that I am honored to represent. <coughs> This is a wonderful holiday gift for New York that will pay tremendous dividends for generations, our city's diversity, culture, transit network, and historic role as a center of the world economy have always given us the ability to lead in the high-tech sector, and this new campus will be the catalyst to help us realize that potential. Just uh, three weeks ago, Facebook opened up their high-tech division, or one of them, here in New, S New York. And uh, speaking to Mr. Cern Khan, I said that this new university would be supplying many of the leaders for uh, businesses uh, such as uh, 
Facebook and Google and all the high techs and certainly the innovation and leadership for the new companies that will be created uh, by these young people that will be educated there. Roosevelt Island will be an outstanding site for this high tech campus, accessible by transportation to all five boroughs, uh, very close to Western Queens in Manhattan, but it's an island unto itself. It will be a beautiful uh, campus and it has a small town feel about it. It is perfectly situated to spin off new projects that can be incubated in the growing business district of Long Island City. And I am particularly thrilled that Cornell University was selected. I, I, they, I congratulate their leadership. They wanted to win and they went out to win and they worked very hard to win this competitive competition. They met with every elected official, all the business and community leaders in Roosevelt Island and Western Queens. They recruited a very generous donor. They created a beautiful campus that was sensitive to the beauty of New York. They protected the access to the waterfront and integrated the community into their plans. And they partnered with one of the world's great engines of the high-tech industry. If Israel is said to be the startup nation, a lot of its success is due to the entrepreneurial spirit nurtured at the Technion. The Economic Development Office projects that an applied science facility could over time spin out more than 400 new businesses across our great city, generating billions of dollars in new economic activity and creating tens of thousands of jobs. So once again, I offer my congratulations to our mayor, to Cornell, Technion, the residents of Roosevelt Island, Queens, and Manhattan. And above all, we thank you, Mayor Bloomberg. We are the center and the capital of many areas finance, the arts, media, health care. Now we're going to be the center of high tech. Thank you. It is a great investment in the future of our great city. And I would say our nation. Thank you so much. My favorite project. Uh, State Senator Jose Serrano represents Rose Roosevelt Island in the uh, state legislature. Would you like to say a few words? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. This is really an exciting day, and I'd like to thank you and uh, for your vision uh, in uh, bringing this together and making this happen, and many congratulations to Cornell and Technion. Um, as some have said before me, our greatest strength as a city is our diversity. For generations, we continue to attract uh, the best and the brightest, people who want to work hard and make a new way in a very innovative way. And I think that this uh, Applied Sciences campus uh, goes hand in hand with that uh, uh, culture that we have here in the city of New York. And, like uh, uh, many have said before, Roosevelt Island is a perfect place for this Applied Sciences campus. I feel very fortunate to represent it in the State Senate. Uh, we are the mecca for cultural and the arts, and I think that we should be, being that we attract so many great and talented people, also be the main uh, area for uh, technology, and I think this will be wonderful. Thank you. I say thank you. Uh, probably much to Helen Marshall's annoyance, uh, Roosevelt Island is part of Manhattan, not of Queens. But the great borough president of Manhattan is very happy about it. Scott Stringer. Thank you very much. Well said, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, uh, Mayor Bloomberg, Bob Steele, Seth Pinsky, this really is a transformative moment for New York City. It's the day we really do usher in the high-tech economy. It's a time when the possibilities for young New Yorkers and people from all over the world who will come here will explore things that we can't even imagine. And I think that this facility on Roosevelt Island in the borough of Manhattan is something we should be proud of. But I also want to just recognize the last six or seven years and the commitment of this city to university expansion even beyond this campus today. When you think about Columbia's expansion and Fordham University's expansion and the NYU 2030 cap campus plan, we are putting our marker down that we will continue to attract the strivers from all over the world, people who will come here and get educated and then stay here because of our wonderful culture, our wonderful diversity. We are a city on the move, and I would not want to be the mayor of Silicon Valley today, because here we come. Thank you very much. And now let me just point out that while this island is between Manhattan, uh, the, the island of Manhattan and Queens, 
Uh, the transportation to this island really is unique. There is a subway stop on a subway that uh, is a very popular one going out into Queens. There is a bridge over to Long Island City, which is one of the new hot growth areas in New York City. And there's a tram uh, right to Second Avenue in uh, Midtown. So it perhaps has a, an, and there's the possibility of water taxi as well. So it probably has as much diversity in terms of transportation is any place. Uh, Jessica Lappin has been a champion of Roosevelt Island. Uh, she's a uh, young city councilwoman that really has worked very hard on this and she's going to talk a little bit about what this means uh, for the neighborhood and for our city. Jessica? Thank you, Mr. Um, we're very happy to hear you talk about water taxi service. That's something we've been lobbying <laughs> for for a very long time. Um, when I watched the presentation, uh, I got goosebumps. And I, I really, uh, it took my breath away. It is such an exciting thing for this city. And it is how we will remain the greatest city in this world. Uh, I want to thank the New Yorkers who joined our uh, high-tech campaign to try and bring this project to Roosevelt Island. A few months ago, we launched a Facebook, Twitter, email, uh, and old-fashioned letter-writing campaign as well to EDC, uh, and I'd like to think that that helped make a difference, and I wanted to thank everybody who participated. But Roosevelt Island is a world-class uh, island. We have the Four Freedoms Park and FDR Memorial under construction. That's already going to bring people from all over the world to come to the island. Um, and this partnership um, right there overlooking the river with the United Nations right behind I think really symbolizes um, where we are as a city, where we're going as a city, where we're going uh, in the world community. And I'm, I'm really thrilled that Roosevelt Island was selected. I look forward to working with Cornell Technion and the residents out there to make this the best possible campus it can be. Uh, Jessica, thank you. I know Harold Tanner has been working me over about how great Cornell is for the last 30 plus years, Harold. Your message finally got through. Congratulations. And if Luke Coletti isn't happy, I don't know what would make you happy with this. Um, today's game-changing announcement, uh, Deputy Mayor Bob Steele and his staff really have set the stage for an incredible influx of talent and entrepreneurship, innovation, and economic activity to our city. Bob, you want to say a little bit? Perfect. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's terrific to be here on behalf of the administration and talk for just a second. And first, let me congratulate the presidents of the two institutions. You know, their teams worked very hard and just really put the best foot forward so that when we were evaluating the different proposals, it really was uh, uh, quite impressive. And we think, too, we just to remind you, as the mayor said, uh, this is the first selection in this initiative of applied sciences. And stay tuned. We hope to have more to come. And I think, too, that uh, since we've seen this partnership come together and develop, it's really become more and more clear of how much support there has been. Uh, the mayor mentioned that there were 50,000 alums in the area. Most of them call me directly, but those that didn't get through, uh, they were good enough to send a book about this thick with 21,000 signatures to, just in case you wanted some light reading on the weekends to understand how they committed they were to the project. Um, I, I think really, too, though, that, that as people have suggested, this is really quite exciting. You know, we, we study the history of how do we keep our economies growing, and for, for 3,000 years we saw the agrarian economy, and for several hundred years we've seen the industrial age, and now we all know that we're in an information-driven economy and basically the skills that we need for the future we believe will be able to be birthed and this will serve as a crucible for those type of skills. Uh, I think really, and this is not about this year, next year, this administration, this is really 30, 50, 100 years in the future to provide a foundation for something new and exciting for New York City. Uh, before I close, let me just say a couple of things. Uh, um, I think that the mayor said it, but I just want to say in front of everyone and provide testimony that the work of the staff and the EDC people, many of them who are here, and the team in City Hall that brought all this together in record time is really extraordinary, and uh, they're the unsung heroes of getting this done. These things are complex, the documentation, the commitments, all the hard work that's been done to make sure this really does happen, and that team should be recognized, and I just wanted to do that publicly. I think, too, that... Uh
Seth Pinsky in particular has been a wonderful ally. Uh, my fellow deputy mayors uh, and Kaz Holloway in operations, Linda Gibbs in health and human services, Dennis Walcott who's here also from education, are all done great jobs to make this happen. Now I thank them, but I also want to put a marker down that we have lots of work to do. So I'm going to thank in advance uh, Amanda Burden, Bob LaMadri from, uh, from buildings, <laughs> and also Carter Strickland uh, and others who are going to help us get this done. Uh, so they're on record and they're kind of all in now too. Uh, I, I think that, um, that I, we should stop here and just say, Mr. Mayor, it's terrific. Uh, we're proud to be part of it. Thank you very much. Um, perhaps the only downer for Bob and me is that uh, his university and mine were not in the competition. They didn't win anyways, but I don't think they even entered. Uh, Bob, you may know, was chairman of the board of Duke University, uh, a, one of the great universities in this country. But um, they didn't submit an application, nor did uh, my alma mater that has an engineering school. They didn't either. I have to call the president and ask why now that I'm free to do that. Uh, as Bob mentioned from the start, it was Seth Pinsky and his team at EDC that really have been the driving force behind this competition and uh, worked so incredibly hard to finalize the deal. Seth, you want to say a few words? Thank you, Mayor Bloomberg, and I want to apologize for my voice. As you can imagine, this has been a busy week or two. Um, but I wanted uh, just to offer my congratulations to President Scorton and President Levy and their teams, um, and also to congratulate um, and thank the team at EDC and in the mayor's office that have worked so hard to make this a reality. For the past several months, I've been referring to our Applied Sciences Initiative as an Erie Canal moment for our city. And what I meant by this was that, as was the case with the canal nearly 200 years ago, this project has the potential to create competitive advantages for the city that could carry its economy and its people forward for many, many decades to come. Now, I know that sometimes at announcements such as these, they can lend themselves to hyperbolic proclamations. However, I really do believe in this case that what is being unveiled today is a project that will not only meet, but has a real potential to exceed the very high standard that we've set for ourselves becoming a true engine for economic activity for many generations to come. And I think this would be exciting in any era in American history, but this is particularly exciting in this era in American history, an era in which, unfortunately, too many seem to be experiencing shrinking ambitions, an era, an era of uncharacteristic self-doubt, an era when many Americans view the future as something to be feared rather than something to be embraced. And given this, I think that we as New Yorkers should be really, really proud of what we're embarking on here today. Proud of the fact that we're not just dreaming big, but that we're building big. Proud of the fact that we're continuing to view the future as a series of untapped opportunities. And proud of the fact that in Cornell and Technion, we found partners who not only believe in our vision, but believe in us and our potential as well. This is really a great day for our city and a great day for our country. And I look forward to more good news coming out of this partnership and our Applied Sciences Initiative in the coming days and weeks ahead. So until then, best of luck and thank you to President Scorton and Levy. And we look forward to many more years of success together. Thank you. Now, this is on Roosevelt Island, so it is perfectly appropriate to have the president and CEO of the Roosevelt Island Operating Corporation, Leslie Torres, here. Leslie? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Welcome. All the best. Don't. All right. We on Roosevelt Island are absolutely thrilled to become the home for Mayor Bloomberg's vision to expand New York's role as a center for technology and innovation. On behalf of the Roosevelt Island Operating Corporation and the state of New York, we welcome Cornell University and the Technion's new world-class applied science and engineering campus as our neighbor, and we look forward to working with them closely. Roosevelt Island has been a pioneer in advancing municipal technology from its very inception. Innovation is in the island's DNA, from our groundbreaking underground sanitation system to the recent modernization of our aerial tramway, which I know the mayor mentioned. Um, we look forward to being a major hub for cutting edge ideas that will continue to improve the lives of the local community as well as the global community. And we look forward to partnering with both Cornell and Technion to make this plan a reality. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Leslie, thank you. Uh, our school's chancellor is here. Dennis, I don't want to put any pressure on you, but when you graduate students and then they go finish their undergraduate work and they want to go into the sciences and at one of the great graduate schools that will be around, this is the place. We're preparing now. Way to go. <laughs> Uh, this new campus seriously will benefit a lot of industries in the city, especially our growing tech center. And I've recently helped open a number of new offices for tech companies founded in Silicon Valley, including Facebook, which is represented here today. But this afternoon, I'd like to hear from one of our homegrown tech companies, uh, one that was started here, and what, uh, see what this new campus will mean for their business. So please welcome the founder of Tumblr, David Karp. David. Thank you. Uh, we founded Tumblr in Lower Manhattan four years ago, and in just four years, we're now a top 20 website in the world. Um, we are determined to be the first top five website headquartered in New York City. Um, but to do that, we're going to need more brilliant engineers. And uh, I really have to say, having two institutions who are responsible for, or at least partly responsible for, some of uh, my favorite engineers who I've have had the privilege of working with. Um, we really couldn't be happier, and I have to say, I really couldn't be prouder. So, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, we'll take some questions, but one thing David said is just true no matter who I talk to, uh, they cannot find enough engineers any place, particularly in New York City. And this is where uh, we ha if we're going to have these businesses, we have to have the engineers here. And engineering and sciences are one of those industries that is uh, grows on itself so the more we get the easier it will be to get the one afterwards and we're well on our way we'll be happy to take some questions uh, if anybody has any yes sir 